Great. Uh, so uh, let's start. And uh, today, Lucien uh, Enekar will give his last lecture uh, on uh, co cohomological whole algebras uh, of two Calabiao categories. Uh, so please, Lucien. Okay. So thank you very much for the introduction. And thank you very much again for the invitation to give this series of lectures. Uh, so I learned, uh, I learned a lot of things. Um, so let's start by some brief reminder of what we did uh, in the first three lectures. So feel free to interrupt at, at any point for questions and comments. So today we will concentrate on the category of representations of some pre-projective algebra of some quiver. But as I explained, we can generalize, generalize things to some abelian category which I call two Calabiao abelian category. And these kinds of category, uh, so we assume they have some moduli stack of object with some good moduli space. So a map to some algebraic space, uh, which is way universal in some sense. Well, but in this particular case, everything is very explicit for pre-projective algebras. So if you missed some lectures before, I just remind you, a uh, little bit what how to define them. So you start from a quiver with vertices Q0 and set of arrows Q1, like this, for example, my favorite quiver. So this one illustrates that we allow the quiver to have loops, for example. Then you take the double quiver. So to any arrow, you, you add an additional arrow in the opposite direction, which I, I denote by a star. And this additional quiver has a canonical um, so it, there is a canonical element in the path algebra of this double quiver, which is a pre-projective relation given by commutators of uh, loops. Now, if you take the quotient of the path algebra of Q bar by the two-sided ideal generated by this relation, you get what is called the pre-projective algebra. And this is the main object for today. Um, so this stack is also constructed in some explicit way as a quotient stack. If you fix the dimension vector, so a non-negative integer for any vertex of the quiver, you can build the representation space of the double quiver of dimension D, which is realized as a cotangent space to some uh, quite large affine space. And this affine space is the datum of a linear map for each arrow in the quiver, uh, in the original quiver Q. On this space, you have the action of the product of general linear groups, GLD, by change of basis at each vertex. And this action is Hamiltonian. So you have the moment map, which is uh, quadratic and has an explicit description. So it's a map from this representation space to the dual of the real algebra, GLD, which I identified with GLD itself as a trace pairing. And uh, it has this description. So it's exactly the moment, uh, the pre-projective relation we saw earlier. The stack of representations of pi q of the pre-projective algebra is exactly the pre-image of zero by this moment map uh, divided by the group action uh, of GLD. So this is a stack equation. And if you perform some GIT equation, so you take the spec of the ring of invariants, you get the good modular space. Which this thing is uh, is very singular. I mean the stack and the good modular space are in general very singular uh, stacks and algebraic variables. Okay. And um, so I explained to you how to construct an algebra structure on some constructible complex, which was defined as a push forward by Jordan Holder map of the dualizing shift on the moduli stack with some cohomological shift to make things very, to make things well behaved. So we had some, uh, some monoidal structure on this uh, category of constructible complexes. 
And this is what we call the Shifified Kolmovic control algebra. So as I hope I convinced you, uh, it's very powerful to work with this Shifified version rather than the derived global section, which would be a vector space and recover uh, a, a genuine algebra. In particular, in the Shifified Koha, you can find some uh, PPS algebra which was defined as a perverse degree zero cohomology of this constructible complex. It's an algebra because this constructible complex has a perverse filtration starting in degree zero. And uh, the, main, the main result I explained yesterday was how to describe the BPS algebra, this uh, algebra constructed in some uh, quite indirect way by generators and relations. So this is the following theorem that uh, fits now in the, uh, on the screen. Um, so this BPS algebra for preprojective algebra, I specialize everything to preprojective algebras today, is isomorphic to the enveloping algebra of some Lie algebra. And this Lie algebra is uh, an, an algebra object in this category of perverse shifts with the monoidal with some monoidal product that I'm not describing again. And it's a positive part of the generalized Katz Moody algebra generated by intersection complex on uh, the good moduli space. You don't take the intersection complex on all connected components, but you choose some of them. And uh, there is some uh, peculiar behavior for isotropic roots, so roots uh, satisfying that the square with respect to uh, the Euler form is zero. Well, um, so for quivers, the, the, this Euler form is actually the symmetrized Euler form of the quiver Q. I wrote a formula yesterday. I don't think it's, it's good uh, if I write it again. So it's not written uh, on these notes. Okay, and the second main theorem that's not going to play any role today is PBW theorem. So BPS algebra was something smaller than the, the, the full cohomological whole algebra, but still we can um, get a grasp on this full coha via this isomorphism between some symmetric power of some um, constructible complex. And this cohomological algebra. Okay, so the plan for today is to explain a little bit what is the strictly semi-impotent cohomological algebra. I I tried to convey the idea yesterday that it plays an important role uh, to prove the theorem A above, and it's also uh, quite interesting in, it, in itself. And then I would like to, to explain you some possible applications uh, of these structural results. So the possible ideas I had was were the following, the Nabian Hodge theory for stacks. But I, I gave up explaining this because Ben gave a lecture series on this uh, some years ago, where this was settled for curves of, gen of, gen of genera zero and one. And now uh, we proved it for any genus. So I refer you to, to Ben's lecture where he probably explained this. Um, one possible application was also the positivity of cospidal polynomials of quivers. It's really interesting, but I decided to concentrate on the last one, which was which concerns the cohomology of Nakajima quiver varieties. Okay. So strictly semi-impotent Cora. So again, you will see the power of working with uh, shifified cohomological whole algebra. So some notation again, as always, a good moduli space for preprojective algebra. Um, now this thing is indeed a monoid, as I explained, for direct sum. So feel free to, 
to interrupt if uh, I, I'm not reminding notations from last time, uh, and I, I should sometimes. I yeah. And uh, if you have a sub monoid like this, so this thing is a is a is a scheme with finite type connected components and possibly infinitely many connected components inside the good moduli space for preposition algebra, then. You say it's a saturated submonoid if the square you can build using direct sum for n and direct sum for m pi q is Cartesian. You want this this square to be a pullback, so it's quite a strong condition on on the submonoid. And in this situation, then. Uh, on one side, you have the good moduli space for pi q. You have this sub monoid. You can build the pullback and define the new stack, which is a sub stack of m pi q. And I still denote by jh the restriction of, of uh, the Jordan Holder map here. What you can do is the Schrick pullback of the Schiffified Koha, which is some constructible complex on this space, to get a constructible complex on. Uh, the new monoid n. And by base change, it's going to be the push forward by uh, this map jh of the duralizing sheath of the new stack. It, and it's quite uh, using this diagram, which is Cartesian by assumption, you can see that you get an algebra structure on this complex. Maybe I should put some n as a substrate here. Yeah. Yeah. And so you see that for any submonoid which is saturated, then you get a new algebra by restriction. Um, so hopefully, this notion of saturated submonoid is non empty. For example, you can, if you take the monoid of dimension vectors, then you have an embedding inside the monoid of semi simple representations of pi q by associating to some dimension vector the zero representation of this dimension. And so what you get, uh, the stack n defined like this by pullback, is a stack of nilpotent representation. Because if something, if you take something, some object here corresponding to a representation of pi q, and when you take the semi-simplification, you get the zero representation, it means that uh, your representation is nilpotent. This construction yields what uh, we call the fully nilpotent two-dimensional cohomological Hall algebra of pi q. But this monoid is not the only interesting submonoid you, you can find. You can define one over uh, a different one. It's uh, which I denote by. What is question? Yeah. So you want the submonoid to be saturated so that the corresponding that's a sub is that going to be a sub algebra? Uh, Koha. So Koha is not going to be a sub algebra. Uh, uh -huh. sat saturated is to guarantee that the Schrick pullback, uh -huh. which is a functor from constructible derived category of n pi q to uh, so so that will be a sub algebra. That, that is an algebra. Or... Yes, I want this monoid to be, uh, I want this functor to be a monoidal functor. And for any submonoid, whether saturated or not, so the I is a monoid of, is supposed to be a monoid of functor, isn't it? Uh, not in my sense, because. I see. Uh, so the monoidal structure was defined by taking this way, which was the push forward of the exterior product. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you want to you want it to be compatible with I upper shriek. Okay. I, and I the see. only way you can you can uh, so you apply I upper shriek, and the only way you can transform this is by base change in this diagram. And to mm -hmm. apply base change, you want this diagram to be Cartesian. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. 
Okay, so this monoid is not the in only interesting submonoid. Uh, a different one is given by this object, which is the submonoid of semi simple representations of PyQ, whose only arrows act acting non trivially as the loops in the quiver Q1. Uh, so in the example I described above, we had two vertices, one like this, two arrows, and then we doubled. So this was alpha star and beta star. So we take the sub monoid of representation, and this one has to act by zero, this one also, this one. And so the only arrow acting possibly non zero is this uh, alpha. And you can check that it's indeed a saturated submonoid of uh, m q. So you can perform the previous construction by taking the restriction. Oops. Uh, here. And you get what is called the strictly semi-potent two-dimensional cohomological collage. So it's uh, the underlying constructible complex. So the stack you get by pullback here, when you take this strictly semi-nilpotent uh, thing, is the stack of strictly semi-nilpotent representations of PyQ. You can define it this way. OK. Uh, some essential result is this one. Is some uh, So this I upper shriek is a right adjoint. It's right adjoint to I lower shriek. And so in particular, it's left T exact for the standard T structures on uh, T structure on the constructible derived category of, uh, of, of M pi Q and uh, the corresponding for strictly semi-potent. And since so I didn't explain this in detail, but uh, since this constructible complex G55 Koha is in cohomological degree non-negative for the standard structures, I explained this for the perverse structures. But it's also true for the standard one. You did use that the strictly semi-potent Koha, G55 Koha, is concentrated in uh, non-negative cohomological degrees for the standard structures. Why is it important? It's for the following reason, appearing on the next slide. Um, so if you have this, like, I haven't specialized in here, it's it's uh, it's quite general context, but you have the direction map. Just imagine that this is a strictly semi-potent monoid everywhere. Uh, it's a monoid, and uh, yeah, it satisfies this condition again. Anyway, the zero of cohomology taking a constructible complex uh, concentrated in non negative cohomo um, cohomological degrees to vector spaces is monoidal. And this is the Kunes formula. So you, you really need this uh, non negative condition because. You see that in the QNF formula, you will have uh, tensor products for HK and HL for K plus L is uh, zero. So if K and L both have to be non-negative, then they both have to be zero. And so taking the degree zero cohomology of the strictly semi-potent cohomology called whole algebra gives you an algebra object. Uh, so again, it's a much, much, much smaller Object and the full strictly semi nilpotent Koha. And this much smaller object can be described as a, as a GKM algebra, so generalized Katzmidi algebra, in the sense I explained uh, yesterday. Um, so if you take a quiver with set of vertices Q0, which you decompose as real vertices, so vertices without any loops and imaginary vertices, which are vertices carrying at least one loop, you can build some uh, board shared datum. So with set of 
of a simple positive root, phi plus, which is the set of vertices. But for imaginary vertices, you, have, you take infinitely many copies, and you embed this inside the monoid of dimension vectors. Um, the generating vector space for each root is one-dimensional rational vector space. Yesterday, I give you some recipe to, to build some Lie algebra uh, out of this datum, G, which is a Borchert's Lie algebra, having a triangular description. And this degree zero uh, strictly semi-nipotent cohomology called whole algebra for phi q is isomorphic to uh, the enveloping algebra of the positive part of this JKM. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Lucien, so you are uh, um, Cartan data or the symmetric? Yeah. Uh, everything is symmetric. Yeah. Excuse yeah. Me. What uh, What about symmetrizable? Which? Uh, very good question. Um, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's not known. But you you work with. Uh, Yeah, what you want to take is is um, so from two Calabi-Yau categories, you will only get symmetric carton datum because of the two Calabi-Yau symmetry. If yeah, you want maybe you can enhance it. You know, like I don't know. Well, the, the, for the Jenkins for the Jenkins diagrams and Lustig treated, he was he didn't do the pre-projective part, but for the half, uh, he was. Uh, taking the quiver with the automorphism. Yes, so you need some, um, you can do some foldi folding procedure as Lustig does. Uh -huh. um, I haven't thought precisely how- Yeah, you see, the, the, if, if you think geometrically, then this mm, Cartan matrix, it's sort of intersection index of mm, like, of the configuration of curves on on, on the two, two Calabia surface. And then, of course, it has to be symmetric, but maybe there is sort of a modification of this. I don't know, maybe uh, curves uh, should be replaced by, um, uh, by reduced divisors where, uh, where this additional... Um, uh, uh, diagonal matrix is encode, uh, encodes this mm, multiplicity of the divisor or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Well, okay. uh, the multiplicity of the divisor could be both pos positive or negative, right? Yeah, yeah. You should engineer an appropriate collection. Uh -huh. Yes. It's, it's yeah, I need to think. Oh, yeah. Definitely interesting. interesting. But yeah, like generalizing the story to to a symmetrizable carton carton data is is uh, interesting. I, I, I remember that in this cluster story of Leclerc and other people, they also struggled with symmetrizable, and they consider representations of equivers not uh, not in vector spaces, but in modules or truncated oh, polynomial oh, rings. So truncation uh, truncation was given exactly by this additional diagonal entries. And truncate, truncate modules or truncated polynomials, it's like fat points. So it's something which in the spirit like uh, multiplicity for non-reduced divisor so kind of. Yes, Maybe yeah. I don't know. I haven't thought about that seriously. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good direction to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for the comment. Um, so I have a proof of this theorem and using the following ingredients, which I'm not going to detail. Uh, so using Lustig category of perverse sheaves on the stack of representations of Q, the original quiver, uh, using the crystal structure 
on this vector space uh, studied by Bozek and using the characteristic cycle map from the Grotendieck group of this category of power sheaves, or acoustic power sheaves, to uh, this vector space, which I briefly explained yesterday was an algebra morphism. Uh, so, in, in, uh, I proved that this thing is actually a, a nice, an isomorphism, and we know how to describe this by lustig work, uh, by by generators and, re and relations, as um, as enveloping algebra of, of, of this so exactly as this object. Actually, for in lustig work, we can work in the graded sense and recover the quantum group. Uh, Okay, so uh, I will move on to some applications, maybe some uh, uh, more entertaining section. And this application is decomposition of the cohomology of Nakajima quiver varieties. So there is a big story, huge and quite very influential uh, story developed by Nakajima in the 90s. Um, and it has two sides, at least. So one side is the geometric construction of representations of Katzmuli algebras. And this geometric construction uses the cohomology of the so-called uh, Nakajima quiver varieties. So I, as, uh, as, uh, as you saw yesterday, I explained to you, Katzmuli algebras can, are defined in a combinatorial way by generators and relations. And the representation theory can also describe highest weight representation and so on in a quite combinatorial way. But if you want to get some understanding on this, it's good to have a geometric construction. And very often, geometric construction is going to provide you with canonical bases, positivity properties, and a nice interpretation, which gives some more feeling about this, uh, this subject. So, and this construction uses a small part of the cohomology of Nakajima quiver variety, which is the middle degree part. And also, it was restricted to quivers without loops. Because if, uh, as soon as you add loops, then you land in, uh, it's more complicated and you get port shirts or generalized Katsumudi algebras. And the other side of the story is concerned Heis the Heisenberg algebra. Uh, which was studied by Nakajima and uh, who defined an action on the cohomology of heat per schemes of points on the plane, C2. Um, so this Hilbert scheme of points on C2 can be seen as a Nakajima quiver variety for the quiver with two vertices and uh, two loops, this quiver, the ADHM quiver, where the relation these loops have to, uh, these arrows have to satisfy is this one. So commutator BB star plus IJ is zero. And there is some stability condition. Uh, so this thing is a framed Jordan quiver. The doubled framed Jordan quiver. Um, what I would like to do today is to put both situations of uh, realiz realization of representations of Katsmudi algebras and uh, of the Hilbert scheme of points on C2 in the same context of BPS Lie algebras action on quiver varieties. And I would like to give a description of this cohomology as a direct sum of modules of lowest weight modules over the BPS Lie algebra. Uh, in order to do this, I need to remind you very quickly what generalized Katzmudi algebra are. It's very quick. So we started from a monoid. Just think of this power of, of the set of natural numbers with a bilinear form, a set of simple positive roots, and a, a space of uh, chevalier generators. 
which was graded by uh, the set of integers. From this, we defined some Lie algebra generated by Chevalier generators and the dual vector space and the carton part with some relations. And the carton part was uh, is a commutative subalgebra. By the by the generalized Katz-Moody Lie algebra package, we have a triangular description decomposition of this Lie algebra as negative, positive, and carton part. Also, the enveloping the algebra has a triangular decomposition as a tensor product of a negative, carton, and positive part. And also, I mentioned the negative plural part uh, here. And very generally, you can construct uh, lowest weight representations of generalized Kasmudi algebras. So, how to do that? The construction is as follows, you start from a linear form from the carton to the rationals, which induces an algebra map from the enveloping algebra of the carton, which is just a polynomial algebra, because H is commutative, to uh, uh, the, the field of rational numbers. Now you can project the Borel part onto the carton part and compose with uh, the algebra of homomorphism we just constructed. What you get is a one-dimensional representation of the, the negative Borel. Uh, to construct a representation of the full Katz-Moody algebra, what you do is to induct this one-dimensional representation to uh, the enveloping algebra of the Lie algebra. So we call this MF, it's the lowest weight module, and the weight is F. Uh, the lowest lowest weight vector is one tensor one. So one is the unit of this algebra, and one is uh, one in Q, rational number. Um, so this representation is cyclic, generated by this vector. But it's not necessarily simple. What you can do is to take the quotient by the maximal proper G submodule. Um, and you obtain a simple representation of the Lie algebra G of lowest weight F. So this is basically all what we need about uh, the representation theory of, of generalized Katz-Moody Lie algebras. It's a very general construction. Okay, and the other side was Nakajima, uh, given by Nakajima quiver varieties. So again, I have some motivation and some uh, some overview. So keep in mind what we said about the uh, representation theory of GKN. And let's move on to Nakajima quiver varieties. So it's, it's very influential. People are still discovering a lot of things. It's constructed from a quiver, as the name suggests. Uh, using va uh, so if you use variation of GIT parameter, then you get symplectic singularities and uh, resolutions. You can recover many significant situations. For example, the Springer resolution for GLN, which is given by cotangent bundle to the flag variety, which you can project to the nilpotent code, can be recovered using this quiver and uh, an Akajima quiver variety for this. Well, I'm not telling you how you do this, but you, you can do it. Uh, what, what you can do is also recover minimal resolutions of surface singularities. So if a finite group acts on C2, it's a symplectic singularity, surface singularity. There is some minimal resolution which can be recovered from Nakajima quiver variety for the Mackay quiver of the group gamma. You also can you can also recover pseudo B slices. I don't give details. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, Hilbert schemes of points on C2 with the Hilbert Chow -Chow morphism. 
So Hilbert scheme of points on C2 parametrizes co-dimension N ideal I inside the coordinate ring ring of regular functions in C2. And so the supports of such an I um, of the quotients. So this thing is a ring of dimension N. So if you take it's a coherent shift on on a C2 supported at n points with counting multiplicities. So taking the support gives you uh, n points in C2. This is uh, what we call the Hilbert show map. But I owe you some general definition of Matkajima quiver varieties. So if you start from a quiver q0, q1, and the framing vector, and I suggestively chose the, the same letter for the framing vector and the lowest weight of representations of Katsumudi algebras, uh, two slides above. Then you can build what is called the framed quiver. It has set of vertices Q0, superscript F. So you add one vertex infinity to uh, the quiver Q. And it, it has sets uh, a set of arrows Q1, F. You add to arrows of Q a bunch of arrows from the infinity vertex to so alpha i l is a arrow from infinity to i. And the number of uh, these arrows is given by the parameter, by the framing vector. So you have, we obtain this way a new quiver for which you can construct and consider the preprojective algebra by QF. Um, and there is some stability parameter giving you some king stability condition, such that a representation M of this preprojective algebra of the extended quiver QF of dimension D1. So the dimension at the infinity vertex is one, and the dimension on the remaining vertices is given by some uh, dimension vector for Q. It's semi-stable if and only if it has no non-trivial d prime one dimensional subrepresentation where d prime is uh, small so smaller than d so i'm a bit confused because it's not clear what the is it a definition or it's a proper it's a, it's a it's a definition it's a definition of what of uh, nakajima quiver varieties which uh, no, it, no, it it sets something that the representation of some dimension vector is semi-stable if and only if. So I kind of oh confused. yes, uh, what I'm saying is that you can find some stability parameter for the quiver QF. Ah, there exists some stability. Yes, sorry, I should have uh, satisfying this condition. Oh. So you have a, like you have a stability right. parameter, and then this is a description of what it means for this stability. Yeah, parameter. but it's stability parameter for which quiver for non-framed or for frame for framed quiver for oh. frame. Then you should say uh, 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 with arbitrary value in this vertex one, or there should be some ah there should be some relation because for king stability there should be. <laughs> certain sum should be equal zero yeah so then yes probably... so yeah yeah okay you have to be okay. careful that's why i, I did ah I, okay I... so you say that there exists a stability so then the representation of this dimension are stable strangely that you call it semi-stable i believe it should be stable so yes uh, st 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 stability and semi-stability would be equivalent in this way yeah okay so in addition Stability coincides with uh, semi stability. We don't have any strictly semi stable. Okay. And so, how you, how can you define Nakajima quiver varieties this way? 
is by taking uh, zeta semi-stable representations of the framed preprojective algebra, preprojective algebra for the frame quiver of dimension d1. And you call this MDF. Uh, because stability and semi-stability coincide, then you get a smooth Nakajima quiver already. But you could also take uh, the zero stability parameter and obtain the good moduli space for the preprojective algebra of QF of this dimension. And this one is usually singular. But uh, by variation of GIT, you always have a map, uh, the affinization map from the smooth one to the singular one. Um, the main object of study is the disjoint union of all these quiver varieties, smooth quiver varieties for all these. The framing vector is fixed and we take all possible Ds, all possible dimension vectors for D, and we take the cohomology uh, of this infinite disjoint union of varieties. Uh, I put some shift here, it's to make this constant shift progress. So this cohomology is a shift of the usual singular cohomology uh, of the variety MDF. And it happens to be uh, the underlying space of uh, a representation of some algebra, which will be a double VPS algebra. So what is double VPS algebra? And here, just uh, yeah. you are taking the cohomology, you have H star, or you are taking the middle cohomology, because for each fixed D, that's supposed to be giving the cohomology, giving the root space, the width space of a D. Um, so I the, take the full the F, uh, F gives the lowest the weight, and uh, uh, F plus D, that, should give, that gives the width space of a reducible representation. Yeah, so in here, I take the full cohomology. Uh -huh. If you take middle cohomology, you recover um, simple representations for Katsumudi algebras. Okay. But what I want to explain is what what is the full cohomology? I see. And so it's much bigger. So, so the representation is much bigger this time? Yes. Okay, good. So it's a bigger representation of a bigger Lie algebra. So you are using the notation MF. Is that going to be the verbal module of the lowest weight F? Oh, it's a bad notation. Uh, <laughs> so... Well, it's a joke. It's a modular space of framed quiver with this date. Well, the end let's call this thing NF. <laughs> and uh, I will have to correct okay. it uh, <laughs> later. But okay. it... Because it would be a direct sum of, of lowest weight modules. It's not going to be a single one. Mm -hmm. OK, thanks. Mm, OK, thanks for the. OK, so this thing will be a module for the double BPS algebra. So we saw some objects in last talks, which was BPS algebra for pi q, built by dimensional reduction from the BPS sheaf. And uh, we described it by generators and relations as some positive parts of a JKM, GKM, by chevalier generators and cell relations. So we define uh, the full BPS algebra, J pi Q BPS, as uh, just everything. We don't take only the positive part, but the full thing. So the negative part is what? So negative part is um, is is what what was generated by the dual. Ah. Yeah, so, so just it's formal, formal, de formal definition. Okay. It's formal definition. Yeah, like we we so geometrically we we construct this algebra. We discover that it's a positive part of uh, Katsumudi algebra, so we can formally say we take the whole thing but we don't have a geometric construction of this whole thing. Um, I, th I thought this time you have a pairing on this 
unplus plus unplus part. If you and if there is a non degenerating parent, yeah, yeah, so you this is a plan. crucial thing. So yeah, thank you for it. I, I will come to it. We have a non degenerate pairing invariant okay. by linear form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's keep this for. And Q is a subquiver of QF because QF was constructed by adding infinity vertex and blah, blah, blah. So it's a, and so BPS algebra for pi Q is a sub Lie algebra of BPS Lie algebra for pi QF. Um, okay, so again, any uh, GKM has a triangular de decomposition. So the yeah, positive... problem puzzled, but with the yeah. sub equivalent, the BPS you, you said that gives the sub the sub algebra in general from a representation theory viewpoint in terms of whole algebra, and given a sub equivalent, the whole algebra is uh, quite different. Uh, it's not going to be a sub algebra or something. Is is this something special? Um, if I think if you take a full sub quiver, so it's a full sub quiver. Okay. Uh, so you have I to say, take... so you just uh, having the the frame of the point all removed and also the double of the point, the frame yeah, of the point all you, removed. I don't understand. You just put zero in the frame. Yeah, it's, it's a full sub quiver. Yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. You need to take full. Yeah, you take you need to yes, take it's any a full row. Sub in, uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you you messed up you messed up the relations. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it has this triangular decomposition with so negative part is created by uh, negative integers blah blah blah. Uh, this implies one thing extremely important that the full BPS algebra for pi q acts on the positive part of the BPS algebra for pi q f. So why is that? So of course the full BPS algebra acts on itself by the Lie bracket. But if you look only at, at the restriction of this action to G pi Q, it will preserve this positive part because uh, G pi Q is only going to change the D here. It's only going to change uh, this grading. So the one is going to remain. And so whatever you, you do by acting by any positive or negative part of uh, G pi Q, you change this, but if this D becomes negative, it has to be zero by the triangular decomposition. Like the, the, the so this thing is preserved by the G pi Q BPS action on the whole thing. Uh, Lucien, isn't the same true for 3D? You're, you're uh, enveloping algebra for the positive part is a direct image, yeah, from 3D. Yes. And yes. your construction of the negative part, it's purely formal. So then right. uh, you can, without going to a direct image, you can construct probably, uh, and actually can you, universal enveloping algebra of some full, not just one half full graded Lie algebra, uh, such that direct image will be enveloping algebra of uh, GBPS for for PQ. Um, it's like because in this situation we know that we have Katsumi algebras, which by definition are doubled formally. But if I give you a, a Lie algebra, but you don't know the structure, I don't really no, know. No, no, no. I I, no. I look for uh, for uh, no, no. Of course, I I look for a triple quiver, so I work only with this. So. My question is uh, whether there is an associative algebra in uh, in 3D, which kind of comes from uh, from positive part 3D in three dimensions, such that its direct image gives you enveloping algebra of this GPS PQ. And the full thing, not only the positive part. Yes, yes, yes. You 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 added it sort of formally, but yes, I I don't know how to do that. Um, uh, but you can construct it again. You can can you construct some 
kind of 3D version, again, purely formally by adding the enveloping algebra of what should be the negative part, or you cannot do it in 3D. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that here I worked at the level of vector spaces. Uh, uh, yeah, but right. you, 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 you will have, you have also the Lie algebra structure on this GPS PQ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um... Yeah. And so in 3D, uh, you do have the, just the Lie algebra, which gives you the positive part in 2D. So uh, can you work again? formally and construct some uh, fully algebra, three-dimensional in 3D. Take yeah, I think yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah. And if, okay, if you can, so it will it will act on what? On the direct sum of, mm. uh, well, oh, oh, well, maybe it will be later on, you, on the direct sum of Cohomology of the framed 3D quiver. Was yes, it? you can take framed 3D quiver with loops, and you have the potential also for the framed quiver. But actually, what you recover is the same action. Uh, probably by dimensional so, reduction. Yeah, by dimensional reduction, and because I take smooth Nakajima quiver varieties, so uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. critical cohomology for. It's going by dimensional reduction yeah. to the yeah. You see, it's, it's, you know, the interesting thing is that probably um, this Schiffman and Westero observed it first time, but in 2D, uh, and, and we observed with other people in 3D, so uh, kind of... Or maybe let, let me postpone this comment until later when you when when you finish with the representations. Okay. Okay. Maybe yeah. It's sure. Pretty much sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I'm almost done. Anyways. Uh, okay. So, so this uh, the big BPS algebra for pi q acts on the positive part for pi q f. And moreover, by definition, this positive part is uh, BPS. Yeah, of course, if you take positive, this thing has a geometric description. Uh, and BPS for pi QF, which is uh, defined as cohomology of some BPS perverse sheep from some singular Nakajima quiver variety, can actually be described as a singular cohomology of some smooth Nakajima quiver variety. And it's uh, the singular cohomology of MDF. So this one was the smooth Nakajima variety with some shift, chronological shift. And this is due to Toda, how to pass from a smooth to a singular quiver variety. Uh, I'm coming back, I'll come back to it in a second. But the upshot is that the BPS cohomology for singular quiver varieties doesn't depend on the stability parameter. If you do variation of GIT and you construct the BPS shift, you take uh, derived global sections, then you get always the same thing. And so uh, this direct sum on which GBPS acts is actually exactly uh, what is now called NF. So it's the direct sum of the cohomology of smooth Nakajima quiver varieties for the framing vector f. So this Toda theorem tells you that for any quiver q, any stability parameter zeta, which is a q0 tuple of uh, rational numbers, and any dimension vector, if you build the good moduli space of zeta semi-stable representations of pi q, And you build the good moduli space of uh, semi-simple representation of pi q. So when zeta is a zero parameter, you have the affinization map. It tells you that the push forward by pi of the BPS shift, so the dimensionally reduced BPS shift on, on, the, on the top variety, 
is the VPS chief for the bottom variety. So it's compatibility with uh, uh, this thing is is a kind of is a partial resolution. Sometimes it's a resolution of singularities, in which case this thing would be the constant chief, the constant perverse chief. So the slogan is that PPS cohomology is invariant under variation of JIT. So it's a really powerful thing. And the result I, I wanted to explain is the following. So the direct sum of the cohomology of Nakajima quiver varieties for framing vector F is isomorphic as a representation of the full BPS uh, algebra for PyQ to this direct sum. So in, uh, in uh, orange, we have a simple lowest weight representations, representation of uh, this Lie algebra with lowest weight given by this linear form. Um, and this intersection cohomology of some uh, singular quiver variety is the space of lowest weight vectors. So it's a multiplicity for this a simple lowest weight representation. And the sum goes over this set sigma pi qf, which is a, a subset of the set of roots of uh, qf. So how to prove this? You want you, you need to prove a few things. First that okay, so second uh, the the highlighted uh, this L, which is a uh, reducible representation for the diff corresponding to the Katsumudi uh, generalized the Katsumudi algebra. Yes. Corresponding to quiver QF, right? Right. Uh, of you, you have a sub of QF. It's um yes. So, or the sub QF is defining the bilinear, defining the weights. So this thing is a linear form on n q zero f. Uh huh. But you restrict it to n q zero. And uh, by is that the... of is that a finite dimensional representation or in general the reducible mm. representation is infinite dimensional? It's usually going to be infinite dimensional. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No problem. That's very large. So, how how do you find such a decomposition? I mean, this decomposition tells you that in particular this representation is semi-simple because it's a direct sum of simples. So you want to prove that NF is a semi-simple representation of this huge BPS by Q uh, the algebra. Mm -hmm. Then once you know it's semi-simple, uh, the only thing you need to do is to find the lowest weight vectors uh, in uh, NF. And uh, you need to identify them with this intersection cohomology for any D. Um, and this thing is by by uh is it's, it's going to be automatically of lowest weight vector of this. But for this, you need to study the action of the Carpent part, and it comes out of uh, the generators and relations for uh, generalized Statsmudi algebra. And then the last thing you want to to see that the lowest weight vector we we found generates the representation as a module over the uh, the full DPS Lie algebra. So maybe if I can take a few more seconds, I can uh, uh, tell you how, I mean, the, the main ingredient for the, the, each of the three parts, it's quite, uh, it's quite, uh, I like the way it goes. Uh, so for semi-simplicity, We just need to find an invariant non degenerate bilinear form. And this is uh, done. So it comes it comes with the GKM package with generalized Katzmoody algebra. 
you have this uh, non-degenerate bilinear form. And if you compose on one side by the, the oil, the carton involution, so the carton involution is going to exchange the positive and negative parts. It gives you a symmetric positive definite bilinear form on uh, this positive part of the of the BPS Lie algebra for pi QF. And in addition, it is invariant for the action of uh, BPS Lie algebra for pi Q. So when you have such a non-degenerate binary form on a representation, you can define uh, direct sum complements. So you can, if you have a simple summand, then you can define the complement. If you have a simple object, then you can take the, the orthogonal, and then it's going to be a representation and so on. Uh, so it tells you that you have a semi-simple representation. So first part is done. For the second part, um, this intersection cohomology gives you the space of low, lowest weight vectors. And it comes from the fact that by definition of uh, GKM, this space is a space of Chevalier generators for uh, space of Chevalier generators for PPS algebra for pi QF. And since I'm running out of time, yeah, I don't detail more. Uh, the last part comes from, from the fact that if you take the direct sum of positive part of uh, BPS Lie algebra for pi q and this space of lowest weight vectors, then it contains all positive Chevalier generators for uh, BPS Lie algebra for pi q f. And so by, by studying what it says, and the PPW isomorphism for the algebras, then uh, it, this tells you that these spaces of lowest weight generators actually generate n plus pi qf as a module over g pi q. Uh, and so we found semi simplicity plus uh, all lowest weight vectors, which with which you can conclude to this decomposition. And uh, yeah, that's all what I wanted to say today. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, very nice uh, lecture course. Yeah, I have a question about your kind of last uh, part of the talk. So your space, whatever, NF or MF on, on your notes, it's a sort of a, a direct sum of cohomology of the uh, framed representations without any stability. Uh, am I yes. right? Okay, right. Great. So it's a singular, uh, singular yeah. operation. Yeah, okay. And so uh, on that space, you, you have the action of the full BPS algebra, yeah, as, as you said, for, mm -hmm. for PQ. Now, is there any sort of a bimodal structure uh, enveloping algebra of this? How, how to say it? Mm. Uh, there is an enveloping algebra of this uh, GBPS, yeah, which yes. is a Hopf algebra. So right. one can try to make uh, a tensor product of such things. And I'm just wondering whether mm, there is a, uh, it probably it will be kind of a similar uh, mm, object um, mm. yeah it's uh, studying tensor products quiver varieties mm, yeah and so then kind of what kind of um, tensor category do you have oh. so you can take the tensor category yeah, of GPPS representations yes um, and this is some subcategory inside uh, it's rather a question I don't know you know for, for usual Lie algebras you have this category O uh, and uh, many nice geometric interpretations of 
objects which belong to the category O, but uh, not really the tensor structure. It's, uh -huh, right. And so I'm just wondering here, uh, the category tensor category you get, should I compare it with, uh, because it does not look as a category O for me, it's, it's not really um yes we can have like we, we have quite a lot of of this uh, oops these simple representations yes um yeah, yeah, yeah. look we can say that there, there, there are some kind of uh, you see there is an industry of questions generated at the time by people which studied the category O, some Kazul patterns, you know, this Kazul duality and so, so on, mm, blocks in the category O. And so I'm just wondering, uh, the rising category, uh, does it resemble the category O? It's a completely different thing. It's rather like you know, it's, so, it's uh, certainly infinite dimension yeah it's, it's going to be huge yeah it, i mean people yes. like this Lee algebra is uh is very very is big very big but it doesn't prevent us from considering yeah some uh, category o i don't see what would yeah yeah it's 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 yeah. too big so that's kind of yeah, a bit yeah, but my, big, my yeah. con con concern uh, 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 and the reason, another reason for this question is that mm, mm, you know that uh, this is a representation of some generalized cuts moody, but if you work with uh, OHA or uh, some of its versions in 3D, you can uh, mm, and work not with all representations of, of the frame quiver, but really with stable frame mm -hmm. which is much smaller so you have uh, modular spaces rather than modular steps then you can recover some remarkable you know uh, uh, quantum groups like shifted affine young young and, and all that stuff which uh, quite popular and also i believe ben tried to recover young young uh, and maybe even he succeeded, I forgot. Mm, uh, wow. So uh, so there is some interesting 3D representation theory which generalizes Nakajima in literal sense. Like if you take the Nakajima quiver, yeah, and you can uh, generalize it by considering this uh, three-loop quiver, first of all, triple quiver of, of the Jordan quiver. But also you can uh, consider this pair of framing arrows, which were somewhere on your slide. Mm -hmm. You can add uh, two more pairs, one between uh, between each. Maybe if you go to, to the slide where you have this mm -hmm. Nakajima uh, quiver. Yeah, okay. This one? Uh, yeah, for example, this one. Yeah, you see, there are two loops and and one pair of arrows. So that's Nakajima. You can add the third loop. Yeah, so it will be yes. And between now you have uh, three areas between any pair of loops. One is already depicted, I and J. But you can take this white loop. And uh, one of the uh, uh, blue loop next to it, and add a framing pair of opposite framing arrows there, and so then you have like sort of a flower with three petals and a three pair of opposite arrows, and you can also add the potential, the cubic potential, mm -hmm. some kind of up upgrade. And do a pure three-dimensional representation theory, which in the end gives us a special case, this Nakajima story, uh, representation and cohomology of Hilbert's scheme. 
so and this three-dimensional theory which we did with 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 Rakchak, Yang and, and, and Zhao, it indeed uh, in, in order to develop it, it indeed reduces to three representation theories in the spirit of Nakajima. So uh -huh. somehow you forget one of the three uh, um, uh, loops and two of the framing pairs of um, arrows and you have just three Nakajima quivers and they somehow interact with each other. So, so that's... The quiver you take, you, it's a uh, very... Uh... Uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes, and one more. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly... And, and you one? also... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a quiver. That's exactly the quiver. But uh, it, it doesn't have to be... It, it does not have to be one dimensional. It can be okay. any three no negative number. Actually, for Hilbert schemes, as you know, it's one dimensional buff. But for yeah, module of instant, on, you can go higher. So let's go higher. And also, the, uh, you can upgrade the potential uh, to the cubic potential on this framed quiver. Yeah, and so you have sort of a three-dimensional story. You can do a three-dimensional story of the one which you mentioned by considering all not necessarily stable representations of this big quiver with the potential and this smaller, of course, it will be Koha, not, not, uh, not just the BPS algebra, but the Koha will work on the cohomology. But you can do uh, even more. You can uh, uh, restrict yourself on, on, for, on, on the stable locus of these framed representations. And then it will be generalization of Nakajima to three-dimensional Kaladiyas. So you see this Nakajima, it's C square. It's indeed two-dimensional two Kaladiyas. Torsion shifts on, on, on two-dimensional Kaladiyas. But you can consider torsion shifts like or Hilbert schemes on C cube, mm -hmm. something like that. This is a relative of this story. Yeah. yeah okay. So then, yeah, and it's this means that it's uh, you shouldn't forget forget about Koha. Uh, in BPS Lie algebra is nice, but there is still some yes, kind of sure. Koha in three dimensions, which gives a, a new uh, objects. It gives us mm -hmm. this shifted affine young ones and so on. So that was a comment which I, I, I promised to, to make earlier. So that's... Does it have uh, anything to do with uh, spiked instantons? Yes, that's thing? exactly. That's part of it's the title. Okay. It's part, part of the title of our paper. Okay, it was yeah. in my uh, memory somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's three-dimensional. But the thing is that in order to prove results, maybe it was our kind of deficiency of our techniques, but we reduced it to two-dimensional. Kohas and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not, in a sense, not entirely three-dimensional, but later, I believe, Dylan Batson he generalized it to any uh, uh, three-dimensional toric Calabi-Yaos and any toric divisors in it may be non-reduced. So then, right. mm, and uh, in that general setup, there is no, uh, although I'm not sure, I forgot. Uh, mm, uh, there is maybe no dimensional reduction, this complete dimensional reduction. But anyway, it's some three-dimensional story, which also mm, related to some vertex algebra business, which you did not mention, but probably you know something about it. Because well, Nakajima constructed... Not very much, actually. Ah, okay. Not so enough, then, not enough. Ben should know, know but more because he thought... I believe what about okay so all right so anyway so that was my comment so more questions yes
Yeah, I think let me let me first look at the question for Yan. <laughs> Don't go yeah. away yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what? So you were by adding this, you said, uh, you you were saying that Nakajima you in a three D case, and then you, um, by adding more loops and more vertices, and then you have a potential. So, so in that case, the, uh. In in a definition of a Nakajima quiver variety, you have this moments formula, which you, you define the pre-projective algebra. So will that be become uh, the Jacobian of that uh, potential? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. So I uh, hope I understood correctly. Now let me get my question to um uh, mm -hmm. So I mean. Most of the construction here, you are doing everything over complex numbers, so which has a nice geometry. But looks that one could do just to take any um, field algebraically close to the field, the modular spaces, whether, and in this case, so when we take about uh, perverse shifts, we just simply, in case of a um, field of uh, Characteristic P, just take a L-adic um, perverse shifts. This is what Lustig uh, did, because mm -hmm. using that one, one can get the link from the cohomology and also uh, with the compact support and also the counting the number of points over finite fields. So to how, feel, how comfortable do you feel that this argument you are doing can work in that setup? So, um, I, I think everything should carry over, but uh, the reason it's not written anywhere uh -huh. is um, one essential tool is local description of moduli stacks. And this okay. uses uh, that GLN is, lin is reductive uh, over the complex. It's a reductive group, so it's linearly reductive, mm -hmm. but it's not linearly reductive over finite fields. For example, to the theorem which you mentioned, probably not true. And so, I, I so with yes. part of the linear or your linear reductivity, you want every representation to be semi simple. I, I want some lunar slice theorem uh -huh. uh, for GLN. Okay, and, uh, and the action I'm considering. But for this, uh, you need a linearly reductive group. Uh -huh. And I think this is okay. one issue in characteristic P. But uh, I mean, we should overcome this issue. And uh, uh, because, of course, you can define cohomological whole algebras for quivers in L-adic cohomology. Uh, I, I and in I, here, I, the, the, the GLN here, what you are considering in, in, in taking the modular space, that's, this is what you are taking a quotient over, right? Uh, yes. So when you do the algebraic quotients and the invariants, it's uh, you, you really don't need the linear reductive as long as it is geometrically reductive for taking the uh, fine quotients, that should be fine. And that that's mm -hmm. uh, that's true actually for for arbitrary characteristic. Okay. Uh-huh. So I should no, take no, but look. this uh, is for example this um how do you call it this local model theorem? Yeah. Is it true uh, for finite fields? So um, I don't think the literature goes for like Calabia category and Calabia completions and this kind of stuff for GG categories over finite fields. Um, it seems that things work well over in characteristic zero. And things are messed up over in yeah, yeah, and your your feeling is is correct. Yes, if when when you Calabia uh, uh, category is kind of behaves much better, I, I would say, over a field of characteristic zero. But there should be a, a, a theory working in characteristic P. It's, uh, at, yeah, there uh, is a kind of. Uh, it's more complicated. A, approach actually over any commutative ring so you can make reductions uh, at primes 
but uh, I'm not sure that it's nice. You see the Kalabiyao condition, if you have a Kalabiyao category, you have um, this Chern-Simons potential, which involve uh, 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 factors one over n factorial. Mm -hmm. So then our finite field, there might be a problem. So you need, like with quantum groups, when you're kind of at roots of unity, you should do something. Yeah. Maybe you can do something with Kalabiyao's, but I haven't seen. Yeah, I think this is the same kind of issues when doing derived algebraic geometry over complex numbers. We can work with TG algebras, uh, but it's it's not working anymore in true generality. And we also some, some more know, complicated. Some important well, in the in the complex case, in the complex case, so when you work in the base, the geometry is over complex numbers, and mostly you could. Just also thinking of the cohomology or the constructible shifts with coefficients also over rationals or complex numbers. But in mm -hmm. the positive characteristic case, the geometry is based over field of positive characteristic. But when you talk about the perverse shifts, they have the coefficient in characteristic zero. I and mean, what no, no, constructing the, the sh shifts might be okay. The Kalabiyao property is not okay. Uh -huh. field. And so what Lucien explained, it uses both. Yeah. And for for given quiver, the, the representation category has global dimension one over any field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And um, it's, probably this is a big, too big a question. And second, my second question is that you have this BP, um, you you have a constructed a very large algebra. That's the A, um, pi Q or pi Q tilde. Is that so just the whole? I mean, in, in the quiver case, what Lustig was trying very hard was instead of using all. Um, he constructed that category P you, you used mm -hmm. was inside of much larger category. And larger category could also uh, define much larger whole algebra. But uh, what he was very careful to uh, describe that small category P. So the sub algebra inside of the entire large whole algebra generated by the irreducibles is exactly this uh, growth and the group you described it, um, in this way. But the, unless the quiver is an AD, ADE finite type, so in this case, the, whether you call that spherical whole algebra or for representation theorists, they call that uh, called a composition algebra. Com composition algebra is much smaller, much, much smaller than, um, than the entire whole algebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, how how much is it? And uh, I remember, J. Show, uh, they and uh, then they they try to see what kind of extra elements are getting, and they get quite a large, infinite many new variables, and that's what I felt you were for imaginary uh, simple roots. You are attaching infinite many um, mm -hmm. vertices. You can get many copies of the imaginary roots. You have the um, yeah. so th those are somehow coming from the uh, Hasenberg the algebra part. So what what is the I try to get a feeling what is the relationship? So the A is kind of a, the largest whole algebra, um, 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 and the BPS is kind is is kind of just. The, the one generated by it's a small part of it. There is a notion of spherical whole algebra, which is yeah. close to what you said. Yeah. Uh -huh. You took just a cohomology of some basic representations, like yeah. one, one and zero, one and one vertex and zero. Yeah, vertex. just at each vertex you have a there are many, course. many, you see one of the problems with this lecture course, that there are too many algebras and when you hear it for the first time, you're overwhelmed. Oh, for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, so and there is also spherical, there is equivariant spherical coha. Uh -huh. Double of well, there are many things. So yeah. Oh yeah, I haven't told you what happens when you put equivariant parameters, but that's a uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and ne ne next time. Uh, maybe next time you can you can say in one phrase. Actually, uh, at the level of so you can if you have a group action, on the, for example, you can yeah rescale arrow rescale the arrows by a torus. Yeah. Uh, everything works equivalently, and you can define the BPS algebra. The thing is that nothing changes for BPS algebra. Uh, what you do is just extend the scalars from Q to equivalent cohomology of the torus of uh, classifying classifying space of the torus, and you get uh, the algebra uh, over this bigger ring. It's a bit. It's not a bit strange, but it's strange. If you do this for 3D coha, then you get a big advantage going to equivariant spherical part because it carries a co-product, at least in some examples, and the full coha does not. It's because, so, like, yeah, I understand what you mean. So the BPS algebra is a small part, and it doesn't change when you take a torus section. Uh -huh. But the full coha, the full coha changes in a drastic way. Okay. Uh, so the multiplication is going to depend strongly on, on the torus. Oh, all right, all right. So then BPS, it's really some... But BPS is rigid in some sense. It's, yeah. It doesn't deform. Yeah, especially you use simple objects, not things. Yeah, okay. Uh, listen, I think... We if should we uh, finish. We want yeah. to, to camp here overnight. We should... We should uh, thank uh, Lucien for his really uh, uh, nice and uh, deep and inspiring lecture course. And maybe we'll invite you in the future uh, with... Oh, I uh, hope so. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. And this is it for today and for this week. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. And it mm -hmm. was a huge Bye. pleasure to read this lecture. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a good day and see you. Have a good one. Thank you for the talk. Thank you.